Hi everyone, welcome to Vibe Fashion's YouTube channel. Today we'll be learning how to make this beautiful flared gown. It's a cut together with sleeve as you can see. That I just have an opening where the hand came out from. And the other side is, it has a strap. And then this dress has a zipper at the back as you can see. So it's a beautiful and simple tutorial to make. So join me while we get right into it. Again, so to begin, I folded my fabric. And what I need to explain is this. Our Ankara fabric is 45 inches in length. And you see that this is the savage of my Ankara fabric. And you can see the other savage there. So when you place your tape this way, I have 45 inches. 45 inches in length. So for this gown, you can see that it's a long gown. The person's length is 63 inches. Of course, my car fabric, using the, the grain line of my car fabric, or the vertical length of my car fabric, it will not give me the 63 inches I'm looking for. So now, I've placed my fabric on fold this way, horizontally. I have seven inch, um, 70 inches, and I folded it into two. So at the end of the day, this means that I have 140 inches. I folded the fabric into two. This is what I'm explaining now. Let's assume that this is our Ankara fabric and it is 45 inches long. 45 inches long. So let's assume that these are 45 inches. And I want to have a length, I'm looking for a length of 70 inches. That's from here. So if this is my 70 inches, we are assuming that this is 70 inches. This is my 70 inches. When I place it on fold this way, it means I have 70 inches on fold. When it is open, that will be 140 inches. So I haven't folded my fabric this way. Now I want to place it on bias. I want to create that triangular shape. Let me use this paper to explain that part because to be clearer compared to the Ankara fabric, since my camera may not capture everything. So now I'm going to fold this paper like this to create this triangular shape. Are you seeing? So I'm going to fold this paper like this. So from looking at this now, if I said I'm looking for a length of 70 inches, can you see that when I place my tape from here, from here, I cannot get my 70 inches. I don't have my 70 inches, which means that this part has to be made up. That I have to complete it with another fabric. So I'll go ahead to place my entire that way now, and then we'll continue. Okay. So now that I've folded my fabric, you can see I have my savage, and this is the length of the wrapper, just like I have on this piece of paper. Okay. So the next thing to do is to get the shoulder measurement. So we're also still going to assume that the person's shoulder measurement is here. It's easier when I use this paper so that it makes it clearer. So the person's shoulder measurement, the shoulder line here. So now, this is the shoulder line. I'm going to mark the neckline. I'm assuming that this is my 3 inches for neckline, which I'm using the neck width of 3 inches by 3 inches. So I'm marking my 3 inches now. So this is my three inches, and then I'll call it like so. And then my neckline for the back is going to be one inch. So I'll still come here and call the neckline of one inch. So on this part, I'll come down by one inch to create our shoulder slant as usual. So I'll create that shoulder slant. So this is what we have now. So I'll go ahead to cut it out like this. This is what I'll be doing first. So now that I have this, I'm going to be marking the measurement, that's the length, which is that 63 inches I'm looking for, or 62. This is 63 I'm using. So I'll mark my, the length like so. But assuming that this is our 63 inches. So now that we have this, I'll go ahead to cut it out. So I haven't cut it out like that. I'll come here now on this side, which is the side seam. 
are going to connect it like this. You want the dress to have a little bit of shape. Okay? So come here first, and then just slant it. Here, you look for where the chest line is. You come down from the shoulder, and then mark the chest line. In this case, the chest line is 8 inches for this person. So this is where my 8 inches is. And the bust measurement of this person is 42 inches. So you divide 42 by 4. So I'm just going to assume that this is my 10.5 plus sewing allowance. So here is my sewing allowance. Then you now use your ruler to just slant it downwards like this. Okay? So you just slant it to follow the A shape. So now I added my sewing allowance around the bust here. You can see I didn't mention anything about the hip measurement and all that because you don't need all those measurements. This flare is big enough to contain anybody's hip. So I only mentioned the bust measurement. So can you see what we have here now? I'm going to get another piece of fabric to complete this so that it can give me this length. So that it can give me this full length that I have here. Can you see? So I need to complete my length to be full. So I'll go ahead and do the same thing on my fabric now. So now on the fabric, here is my center front. On this center front line, I'll come down to mark my, I've already done my shoulder slant already. So this is my, my starting line. This is the shoulder line here. So now that I have the shoulder line, I'll mark my 3 inches by 3 inches. So we have our 3 inches by 3 inches. We'll bring in our cord, our cord to create the neckline. So here's my neckline. The back neckline, I'm using a neckline of three, then 1 inch by 3 inches. So, I'll mark the shoulder slant by coming down here by 1 inch. And then we go ahead to connect it like this. So now that I've done this, I have my shoulder slant and I have my neck line. Okay? So now from this tip here, this is where I'm going to start taking my measurement the measurement of the length that i'm looking for okay i'm going to be marking my 63 inches round but before i do that i'm going to place my tape from here from the shoulder line here this part i mark that eight inches which is the chest line of the person so this is the eight inches which is the chest line of the person so at this on this eight inches line i'm going to enter the person's bust measurement now the bust measurement is the bust is divided by four that's 42 divided by four i have my 10.5 plus my sewing allowance of two inches so here is my sewing allowance of two inches so it is from here that i will now slant my line all the way down to the end of the dress so basically you want the bust to have that small fitting not really fitted around, it's still going to be free because these two inches that I've added, I'm just going to sew on half inch so it will still give me the ease that I'm looking for. Then, before you go all the way down with that freeness, so we'll come back here before we now come and draw our angle. So, I'm just going to take my ruler and then cut, slant it towards the end of my fabric like this. towards the end of my fabric so I'll go ahead to mark my 72 in my sorry my 63 inches so I'll be placing my tape from this tip here down to mark my 62 inches 63 inches sorry so 
of the neckline, sorry. So I haven't done that, so the next thing to do now is to cut out the shape. So remember that I marked my the bust measurement here, so I'm just going to take this line like this and then I'll come back and explain why we are doing this. So I'll just go ahead to cut it out so that I'll have my exact shape. So can you see, I've cut it out. Can you see now that my fabric is no longer unnecessarily too wide. I now have the exact bottom of fabric I'm looking for. So now the next thing to do is to bring in another fabric that I'll use to make up this part that is short, the front piece. So I'll place it like this and join them together. So after joining it, then I'll have to trace out this same shape that I have on that. So I'll take it to my sewing machine and then join it and come back and show us the next thing to do. Okay, so as you can see, I've joined my fabric here. Can you see? It's really neat. I hope you can see it clearly. You want to be very careful, considering that it's savage to savage, you are joining together. You don't want to allow the savage show under the clothes. I'm going to press this. So you'll notice that it will lay flat so that it doesn't show that there's joining. This kind of style, there's really nothing you can do. You must always join it because it will never give you the length, especially when you are using Ankara. But when you join it, you have to do it neatly so that if somebody won't just see it and notice that ah, they joined this uh, dress. Okay, so I'll place my fabric down on fold. When I place it on fold, I'm making sure that this is my center front and my center back there on the same. Part. Then I place one fold, then I will use the back to trace out the same shape. Remember that I already have the same shape for the back. I'll trace out the same shape and I will show us. Join my back piece together. This is the part that I'll have my seat allowance. I have my one inch on my seat and half inch on my seat allowance there. So and then this is my front piece. So also folded on top of it. So you can see that the back is just a little wider than the front bead half inch because that's the part for the zip allowance. So again, I'm going to mark the neck line right now. I'm using a neck depth of three inches for the front and then a neck depth of one inch for the back and then the same three inches for the width. You can see I'm placing it from the front as from the front piece. I'm not placing it from the zip allowance there. Okay, so I'll create my curve this way. I'm going to bring in my pattern to draw my front neckline or the front neckline, not my front neckline. So now that I've done this, I'll go ahead to cut out the back neckline, which is what they have in common. Then I'll raise it up to cut the, shift it away to cut the front neckline. So here's our front neckline. So now, for the cut together with sleeve, we're going to have the cut together with sleeve on one side, which is the left side. So now I'm going to open this fabric so that I can show us how to achieve the cut together with sleeve. And then the part that is going to have the mono strap. That is the left hand side, or this side is the left hand side. can see so the side that is the left hand i'm going to come down here remember that we already have our shoulder slope but i'm going to come down here and curve it downwards again because it needs to just curve downwards on top of the person's shoulder considering that we do not have a sleeve there we're not attaching a sleeve so i'm going to come here now and then curve it this way so just create a curve around this part and then I'll come down from this point by 13 inches. If you look, took a look at the style, you'll notice that it's the elbow 
it's, it's around the elbow that you can see the hand coming out. So because the hand is coming out from the elbow, so I'll take my measurement from here and get the person's elbow length. So from here is the person's elbow length. The person's elbow length is 13 inches, so plus half inch for joining this point. So this is my 13 inches here. So this way I'm going to create the sleeve opening for the left hand side. So at this 13 inches, I'm going to go up, I'm going to come in by one inch. I'm going to come in by one inch, or uh, let's do 1.5 because half inch is my sewing allowance. So by the time I sew with half inch, I'll be left with my one inch. So I'll do that. So and her round elbow measurement is 12 inches. So I'll mark this point. So now coming in by one inch here. So and I'm coming down by six inches. But before you do that, if you're coming down by six inches, you want to measure and mark it round to be sure that you're not you don't have more than you don't want to have more than that 12 inches at that point. So the highest you should have should be 13 inches. So can you see? So at this place I have this round hole. So I'm going to take my measurement. So I actually came down by five inches. That's can you see? I actually came down by five inches, not six inches, because I'm creating a curve. Of course, it's going to be bigger than it's supposed to be. So what I have here is 14 inches. Remember that I'll be swaying with half inch, half inch on that side, so I'll be left with just 13 inches. So I'll create a hole here. That's where her hand will come out from. This is where the sleeve opening is. And then, like I said, you come here and curl this part because you want it to fall nicely on top of the shoulder. So can you see? I'll be joining this part with half inch and then her hand will come out from this part. So now for the asymmetric neckline, I'm going to come here now and then curve it down this way. Remember that the necklines are not the same. The back is higher than the front. So I'm going to come here now to this point. You want to check and see the angle that we're using. You want to come down from this place by six inches. Anything more than six inches will be showing the person's armpit. So we don't want to expose the person's armpit. So I'm coming down by six inches from this point. That's from the tip of the shoulder here. So I'll come down by six inches. So from this six inches, I'll connect it to the neckline. So I'll just bring my curl like so, and then connect it. So remember that I'll be using a strap to replace this part. So because I'm using a strap, so for the front, I will still come here and curl it to this same six inches. You can make the back, the front higher, the back higher, whichever one you want to do. But at the end of the day, it's the strap that will replace whatever it is that you have removed from here. So I'm cutting the front out now. So I cut out the front. So now I want to go ahead to cut out the back. Can you see where it is? So like this. I'm making the back higher because I don't want the back to be as deep as the three inches. I want the neckline of the back to be higher. So, okay, so the back is a bit too higher than the front. So now this is it. So I'm going to cut that strap that will replace these six inches I've taken away from here. Remember that the strap is just going to be here at the tip of the armhole here, okay? So I'll cut the strap and show us how we're going to go ahead to attach it. So the next thing to do now, after cutting out the strap, is to cut out my facing. So let's do that first before going ahead to cut out the strap. So you place your fabric like this. You can see that I've already cut out my neckline. So I'll have to place it open so that it can follow the shape and give me exactly what I am looking for. So I'm placing my fabric, bad face facing bad face, to get the shape I'm looking for. That's to get the opposite direction.
So now I have my facing for the front. So I'll just come here to cut the down part. So here is the facing for the front. So the curve, the back is going to have zippers. So I'm going to cut them in bits. That's one for the front and one for the left and one for the right. So this is what we have for our front. So we'll go ahead to cut that of the back. So I'm going to use my leftover pieces for the back. So good face facing good face to get the opposite side. So I'm cutting the one for the side with the cut together with sleeve. So I'm also going to mark it, press out my neckline exactly the way it is. And then still come here. So I'll come down here like so. And then curl my neckline out. So if you would like to know the measurement I use, let me place my tape. And then make sure I use three inches here. This side is three inches also. So I just hold it here. This part is four inches. So I'm okay with that side like so. So that it just holds nicely. So this part that is just slanted, that's the asymmetric side. It's just going to be cut straight. So I'll just get another piece of fabric and then place it and cut it out straight. Well, it's going to be the same two, three inches in length. So this is the facing for the side. That's for the monostrap side. Can you see how it's going to look like? So this is the facing, and this is the facing for the side with the cut together with sleeve. So like I said, I'm going to fix my zipper on one inch. Oh, sorry, on half inch. Remember that this neck is quite high. If you don't fix zipper, the person may be struggling with it and you just tear the dress. So, but if the person doesn't want zipper, you can just bring down your neckline so that it's easy to wear. So. That's that. Now, the next thing to do is to take it to my sewing machine, fix my zipper, and then I'll use my facing to turn the back neckline and also do the, turn the front neckline, and then I'll show us how to go about. Okay, I've forgotten something. I've not done, we've not cut out our strap. Remember, we came down by six inches from the armhole. So I'll be making my strap, I'll be making my strap 12 inches long plus half half inch to sew it in. So everything will be 13 inches. For the strap because it won't have joining at the shoulder part. I'm placing my fabric on fold now to cut out the strap. I'm looking for the length of 13 inches. Remember that we, we came down by 6 inches from the shoulder line. So if we came down by 6 inches for front and back, 6 plus 6, that's, that's um, 12. So plus 1 inch, which is going to be half inch for sewing the front. And then another half inch for sewing the back. So I'll just go ahead to cut it out. So and my strap is, is two inches wide on fold. So that by the time I sew it with half inch, I'll be left with 1.5 inch um, wide when I am done. So I'll just go ahead to cut it out. I'm going to try it here. I'll turn it good face facing good face. And then I'll sew the strap. Then I'll show us how to fix it into our dress. Okay, so that's that for the cotton. So the next, the first thing to do is to fix my zipper, then turn my facings. So before turning the facing of this side, I'm going to fix the strap here at this end here. At this end here. And then the, I'll use my, remember that this part is going to be sewn on. I'm going to use half inch to fold it in. I'll use my bias to sew that part, the part of the armhole, inwards. So I fixed my zipper. I fixed my zipper already. So the next thing to do now is to bring in the facing for this asymmetric side like this or place it like this and you see and then i'll also place the facing for this other side like so making sure that so i have to open the zip like this 
and then I'll place it. So you want to pin this part. Okay, so I'll open this part too and then pin this part like this. So then I'll bring in my strap and then show us how to fix it at this point, the part that has the strap. So here is my strap, I've also turned it so you can see. So I need this part, the part I joined is going to be on the center like this so that it's covered. That will be the side on top of the person's skin. So this I'm going to be placing it. I'll just press this place well and then show you. I have this place, the place I've joined in the middle. So I'll bring in this strap like this. This is now the good side of my strap. So I'll be placing it like this. I'll come in by half inch. For the strap, I came in by three inches from the side because coming in by that half inch will make the armhole very tight or the armpit area very tight. So I came in by three inches for both the front and back. Please take note of that for both the front and back. So that gave me an armhole of complete eight inches, which is the armhole of a boss 42. So I had my armhole of eight inches, which was firm enough for that person. So please take note of that. This is it. So after sewing this part, so before I sewing my back, I'll make sure that I bring out this strap now to be on this side. Now this is how it's supposed to be. This is now the good face of this is the good face of my of my back piece facing this side. So I'll bring this side too like this and then sew this part. Can you see how it's going to be? It will come in here also or come in by the same half inch that I came in on the back. So this is what I'll do. So I'm just going to remove the pin. I'll finish with the back first before I'll go ahead to fix the front. But I I'm sure we understand what it looks like. Because can you see what we have now as we have done this, as I've pinned them together. So I'm just going to remove the front for now and then go ahead to sew the back before I fix it and sew the front part. Okay, so I fixed the strap for my front, you can see. So this is what we have, and I've also fixed it for the back. So now, the next thing to do, like I explained, you can see how it is, the neckline, everything I've fixed it. So the next thing to do is to join the shoulder of this side, as this side that is cut together with sleeve. So I'm going to place my fabric like this, this is my front piece. I'll place it like this and then bring this part. That's this is the back piece. Now I'm going to place the back facing to meet this point. And then bring this one to turn over like this. So I'm using it to turn it over like this is to turn the shoulder. So you want to just pin this part down because you don't want one side sticking out more than the other. So I'm going to sew it on half inch. So I'll sew it on half inch and bring it all the way down to this point this sleeve opening here i'll bring it all the way down to this point and stop here then i'll proceed to sew on half inch all the way down but before i proceed to sew on half inch after sewing all the way to this point i'm going to weave the shoulder then i'll use my bias tape to turn this part because it will be opened like this now so I'm going to use my bias to turn this part that's to cover up these rough edges. After doing that, then I'll go ahead to sew on half inch all the way down to the hem. And then I'll come to this side and pick the other side. That's the side with the strap. Uh, with the strap. I will sew it also on half inch all the way down to the hem. And then I'll weave it and show us what it looks like. 